Welcome to Live Free. I'm Angela K. Austin. Together, we'll discuss books, we'll explore the world, and we'll do it with some of my closest friends. And hopefully, we'll make new ones along the way. Hey everybody, this is Angela K. Austin, and today I am here with my friend, Twyla Turner. Twyla, say hi to everybody. Hey everybody. (laughs) So if you guys aren't familiar with Twyla, I hope that today we introduce you to something brand new, but I'm quite sure that a lot of you guys are familiar with Twyla Turner. Her portfolio of books includes many things of which one is Three, which has been recommended to me by like a gazillion people, okay? But Twyla and I have also done a couple of anthologies together. She was also a part of the Cage Chronicles. You know, she's got Starstruck. She has a backlist that I know many of you are going to want to check out after this conversation. But one of the reasons that I invited Twyla to be here with me today is because of the fact that not only is she writing in this world of romance, this world of interracial romance, but Twyla is one of the few people that I really genuinely believe, you know, she writes not just in that world, but also in the world of multicultural romance. And she also has a lot of her books, of course, feature this big, beautiful woman. So when we talk about speaking from these different points of view and these different conversations that we need to give an audience to, I love the fact that she's working in that world. And also... Just to let you guys know, Twyla has more wonderlust than I do. So I had to have her on this podcast so we can not only talk about her writing, but how her traveling influences her writing. So Twyla, tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you write. Okay. Um, Well, uh, I'm just a Midwest girl. (laughs) <laughs> I come from Joliet, Illinois, which is about 45 minutes southwest of Chicago. And well, for pretty much the majority of my life, I have been plus size, curvy girl, uh, fluffy, whatever you want to call it. And um, I've been an avid reader for my whole life. And I basically read books and I wanted to see myself in the heroines that I read and never did. Um, And so one day I decided to put the books down and pick up my laptop and uh, started writing characters, women who resemble myself and many of the women I know uh, with some meat on our bones, with some flaws, with beautiful imperfections. And um, that's where my brand, Novels with Curves, was born. And, you know, I noticed that, too, and we'll talk more towards the, the latter part of this conversation, just about Rock the Curves, right, yes. your new release. But, yes. I, you know, I, every time I was, like, reading through... And, you know, you would you would refer to your character's tummy. I kept, like, I was like, her tummy? What the I have? Look at my tummy. It's like, is this book about me? Okay. But, um... <laughs> like, it's like, as I rub my tummy, who is this book about, Riley? But, um... But yeah, and that's that's really one of the things because like you just said, you know, that's something that I hear over and over again, you know, every time I interview um, another author is that because of something that you saw missing, you know, you put the books down that you were reading and you start, you jumped into the world of creating stories. We, we travel this circuit together doing all of these different events and what have you. And, you know, if you guys have never seen, you know, Twyla Turner at one of these events, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll jump in and come and join us at one of these. But the love that she receives when people refer to some of her books books is, you know, truly amazing. The fact that you have these characters that I love and so many readers are supporting that work, what does, mm-hmm. how does that make you feel? You saw something that was missing 
And so your brand was born because you saw it missing and you decided to jump in and jump into the game and start to tell those stories. So the fact that you have found all this love and adoration for your books, for yourself, how does that make you feel? How, you know, what, tell us about that. Um, it, it feels amazing and sometimes surreal. Um, like basically uh, I, I heard this quote before um, by another author, and I think it was another Black woman, but I can't remember who it was. But uh, basically, I write the books I want to read. And so me writing these curvy uh, characters, I, you know, of course, had hoped that it would touch someone that, um, you know, that readers would connect with them. But um, seeing just how much they connect with my characters. It, it just warms my heart and it makes me so incredibly happy um, that, you know, I've, I don't know, just making them feel good um, and letting them know that there, that there is hope for us curvy women to um, find love, find a man who adores us just as we are. You know, when you say like, you know, it's almost like, you know, gotta keep hope alive, but you know, but yeah. that's, that, you know, but that's the thing. Like I, I, every time I, I talk with somebody about, you know, the need to have, um, to allow people to be able to see themselves, yeah. you know, because when I first started writing and mind you, the thought for me to, to write something popped into my head years ago, even, you know, before undergrad, because I've always written, I just never, you know, I shouldn't say never. I just didn't um, uh, try to pursue it as a career until later in life, right? Yeah. And so, Same. you know, so it, but it was that same thing. I would read all these books and the, the woman of color, the black woman especially, was always like some sort of a sidekick. Yes. You know, some sort of a sassy friend, the whatever friend, the blah, blah friend, you know, the comic mm -hmm. relief, you know. Yes. And I got to the point where, you know, I was just like, who didn't, you know, grow up on these, you know, middle age books and these high school romances and these whatever, you know, you know, that you read as a, you know, as a young adult woman or whatever, but it becomes tiring not to yes. see yourself because why is that a hopeful you know and it's not to be you know like negative but well, why is that a hopeful thing we deserve yes. Yes. <laughs> we deserve the same things you know yes. You deserve, yeah. you deserve to be loved for who you are, as mm -hmm. do I, you know, mm -hmm. and we deserve to have that love come in these different forms that we want to see it come, you know, mm -hmm. in whatever yeah. that package is. It's just interesting that, I mean, I, although I do feel like now people are starting to see that on the big screen, you know, yes. you know, yes. the big screen, mainstream publishers, but every time I try to look at something or read something, you know, and I was telling somebody in preparation for my um, interview with Michelle Prince, I went out mm -hmm. to research, um, you know, white female authors who were writing with black voices or what have you. And I started yeah. to see some of the reviews that those different, you know, authors had. And mm -hmm. it was that thing, you know, about it being cliche and stereotypical and whatnot. And yeah. so it's like you see these mainstream publishers, they're trying to put the voice out there or, or put the yeah. story out there, but they still have yet to understand that it, you know, they need to have more voices at the table yes. to tell yes. the story, you know? So yes. you can't just look into the stable of authors that you currently have and expect them to be able to tell those stories in a way that is going to prove, you know. So I love yes. that you saw that and you decided to jump in and be one of the people telling the story. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's my dream because I love movies probably about as much as I love books. Like, it, they, they run neck and neck. Um, 
And like, I don't know, I'm just a, a movie buff and I know a lot of useless movie information. Um, but my, my dream is literally to um, see, and I know, I know that I'm not the only one who has this as an author, to, to see one of my books um, make it to the big screen or even to now the small screen because small screen is more popular than the big screen. So making it to Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime, um, but like, and not something silly. Like I want, um, you know how how much women fell in love with um, the Notebook and how passionate and everything it was. Like I want, yes. My dream, my dream is to see someone with a big old booty, thick thighs, a tummy, <laughs> a tummy and all that, getting hers with some fine man yes. on the big screen and it not be a joke. Yes. Like, I don't want people to like laugh, like, oh, oh my God, there's this big girl getting it. No, yeah. he's getting it. Yeah, but somebody be like, that's unbelievable. Well, you know what, though? But But I understand that because I was telling somebody, what was that movie, that Netflix movie with... Um, Alfred Woodard? Like where, the one where everybody, only the like the blind people were surviving. What was it called? Uh, oh, Bird Box. Bird Box, right? So yeah. what's, what, what's the name of that actress? Sandra Bullock? Bullock. Sandra so Bullock. I was like, Sandra Bullock went hard. Do you remember that brother in that movie? I was yes. like, yes, yeah, Sandra, get <laughs> yours, girl. If you go dip your foot in the pool, dip your foot in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah. it was, you know that's not unbelievable nobody yeah. said oh sandra bullock's character you know would never pull that brother nobody nobody was out there like that's not you know unfathomable yeah. Yeah. so why is your dream something that is on you know that, mm-hmm. that people would like laugh at or think is unrealistic i think yeah. it's about the storytelling yes you know because that's you know, the point you know, exactly, because, you know, I, I know you have a passion for movies because you, you know, I'm always tagging you like, hey, Tyler <laughs> Turner, did you see this? What about this? Like, I was just, you know, we were just Facebooking about, what's that thing? I don't even want to put the name out there, but that Netflix movie. Yes. With girl, Taraji P, because I was like, yes. oh, Taraji, come on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, yeah, because, because of that post, I have taken it off my to be list. <laughs> You know, I'm like, I love her. I love love her, her, though. (laughs) You know, she's a one click. If it's Taraji, I'm clicking. Yes. You know, but I was like, what? But, um, (laughs) but, you know, but, but that's the thing, you know, because of such this need to, you know, like, or, or such this desire. You know, I want to see things that tell stories about Black women from different perspectives and whatever. Yes. whatever. So yes. I see Taraji. I'm like, oh, one click. I'm all about it. Then you watch it. Yes. Like, no, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> you know? Yes. But that's like why having, you know, unique points of views from people who are walking the walk. Yes. You know, to me, because so when you read it, you, you become more, I don't know you can tell their their love for the characters that they're writing. Yes. You know? So like I said, I'm already, Rock the Curves, I'm already like, yeah, you know? I'm like, wait, mm-hmm. I'm like flipping, I'm like, all right, Gage, what's up? You, you know, I'm <laughs> like, what we doing, Gage? How we talking <laughs> this? But I also love the way that you wrote him because, you know, unbeknownst to a lot of the people around him, he mm-hmm. has a sensitivity and an understanding. So he has, you know, that inner gauge who yes. is a certain way, you know, yeah. and, and like yeah. I said, this, this just came out. So yes, people, I'm talking in cryptic language right here. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it's just the, the, that inner gauge, you know, he has yeah. a, a way about himself that is still calling out, still searching for something, looking for a certain type of connection. And so I'm really curious about where these two are going, you know, so I'm I'm super interested in that. Yeah. And, um, and the thing is, is about 
the majority of my books, like um, the men might be drop dead, gorgeous, buff bodies, all this stuff, but um, they are often just as much of an underdog as the women. Um, like, I don't know. And, and, and in almost all my stories, the men love these women from jump. And like, maybe that's just my fantasy because, you know, um, I had like traumatizing moments as a child, like with boys and them not, um, uh, knowing that they liked me, but weren't willing to show it or weren't willing to fight for me kind of thing. And so in my books, I basically am writing my fantasy, like to have this man that knows from the beginning that I want this woman and nothing is going to stop me from getting this woman. Um, and so, but still like um, in my very first Starstruck, um, Gabe, he was an orphan um, in one of my more recent books, um, the bravest hero he um was unable to be himself because everyone expected him to be the you know the golden boy and like a certain thing and like to um like to play sports and things like that and it wasn't him and and also you know he had a horrific accident and lost a leg and that was part of the story a big part of the story how the two characters met um in my book, Winter's Beast, the guy was disfigured from um, dogs that uh, attacked him when he was little. And and so, I mean, there's just all these guys that um, are, you know, they have just as many issues as the women. And um, I don't know, it kind of makes a unique situation that they adore these curvy women and, you know, and um, make no bones about it. Well, you know, Winter's Beast is another one that, of course, I've heard about a lot from a lot of people. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, you know, but 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 that's I think that that's one of the things, though, because I, you know, I said this to, to someone else. Um, but one of the things that we do in Romance Landia, you know, <laughs> is we often look for um, we often look for the perf- the perfections, you yes. know? So yeah. we're looking for, I mean, often it's touting wealth, beauty and youth mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah. The, yeah. the physical, you know, whatever of someone. So when you talk about these traumatic events in these childhood whatevers, you know, these are the things that real people are built on, mm-hmm. you know? These are the things yeah. that happen every day in life. I tell people all the time, you know, with me, you know, my childhood may have been a little reversed from yours. You know, I had a, I was a very high metabolism, you know, up until yeah. like yesterday. It's like, that's like a <laughs> racing. And then it hit a wall. It was like, bing, you know. <laughs> it just like stopped. It was like, okay, is that what we're doing today? I feel you. But you know, when I tell people all the time, when I graduated from high school, I was 90 something pounds and I was the mm-hmm. exact same height that I am today, which is five. Oh, wow. So yeah, you're tall. <laughs> yeah. So if you can imagine, you know, <laughs> that nerdy girl who's like five, yeah. eight and you know, <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, I remember days, you know, where, you know, I was, you know, would like really be like attracted to some guy. And I can remember comments where guys would be like, oh, you're kind of thin, aren't you? You're kind of a lightweight, aren't you? You're kind of a this, you're kind of a that, you know, yeah. because I wasn't a okay. You are talking to someone, Twyla Turner, who wanted to be a curvy girl <laughs> when I was not, okay? Yeah. And yeah. So, you know, and so as yeah. I started to, you know, get my curving going, you know, I was like, <laughs> oh, wait now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, anybody who watches my YouTube videos, I'm sure you can tell a girl appreciates her curves, okay? It was hard work. <laughs> 
It's <laughs> hard work. Okay. But, but that's the, you know, that's the thing. So, I mean, so my characters may fluctuate. They may go from being yeah. this person who's not as curvy to someone who is curvy because I, I do, I understand both sides of, of that kind of a spectrum. And I yeah. honestly remember times in my life where I would look at a woman who was curvy and be like, like straight, you know, just a, an adoration with a little hint of jealousy because mm-hmm. I did, I wasn't that person, you know, yeah. and from the world yeah. that I came from, that was, that was the woman that the men that, you know, I was yeah. attracted to, that's the woman they were attracted to, uh, you know? Yeah. So yeah. where you're talking about this hopeful thing, I'm like, that's all I saw, Twyla. <laughs> well, and, I have and the bruises. I, I have the bruises. <laughs> okay, well, but I know what so, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. Maybe it's just where I came from. I don't know. I don't know. But like, it just seemed like all the boys wanted someone slender. But then, even looking back, I swear, hindsight is twenty twenty. Looking back at like pictures of myself in junior high pictures of myself in high school and in college. Just like, if I knew then what I know now, if I had the confidence then that I have now, I probably would have been half naked (laughs) all the time. (laughs) All the time, because like, I just felt, you know, I don't know, like I just felt huge and I wasn't, I wasn't, but it was just, you know, the boys, they were, I guess, cruel. They were cruel. And I don't know why, like, they would, you know, at certain times single me out, but they often did. Um, so I don't know. That that was just a thing for me. Um, I think people all over are cruel for all kinds of unnecessary yeah. reasons. Because, yeah. you know, because honestly, it's like, even when I was reading the part about, you know, you know, like Gage's flashback at the beginning of yes. Rock the Curves. I'm like, you know, I feel I was like, he was just like, you know, bullies. Da, da, da. I was like, yes, Gage, mm-hmm. taking me back to my childhood. <laughs> it's like, yes. because, you know, it was just that thing of, I remember those feelings. And like you said, mm-hmm. it's like now, it's like women are out there, the, the body that, you know, I was like, you know, this is this is what's happening in high school. How's a girl supposed mm-hmm. to get a boyfriend? You know, yeah. and yes. it's like, you know, then, you know, you flash forward and it was like, you know, and I could see the confidence that grew in me as mm-hmm. I started to feel more comfortable and own my body, you yeah. know, because mm-hmm. I just, you know, I accept it. I was like, this is who Angela is right this is like this is the body that I have and so I need to understand that I need to love me (laughs) you know and the person who can't love me in this package you know they don't even need to be in my space anyway you know and why am I even trying why am I why do I care why am I trying why am I trying to make this person love me and you and honestly It took me a long time to get there, you know? And I mean an extremely long time because you're talking to a girl who will literally be like, I'm going to go drink this milkshake. This milkshake (laughs) going to give me two pounds. (laughs) You know? It was like, you know, like literally because I was like, what is this? You know? And then it's like, I would go off to college, went off to college and people were like, well, yeah, don't people gain 15 pounds, whatever, freshman year college? And it was did. like, I didn't. I didn't at all. <laughs> people were like, where is your freshman 15? I'm like, I don't know. Leave me alone. You know, See, you, you know. <laughs> you're, you're drinking a milkshake to gain two, two pounds. I could look at a milkshake and gain five. Like... <laughs> Like, man, man, Tyler, I would tell you, if we would have been at the same place at the same time, we would have been hilarious because we'd have oh, been yeah. trying to swap bodies around this camp. <laughs> I'd have been like, all the guys I know want women who are short 
and thick. It is like if you were trying to go after the ones who want somebody who's tall and thin, we would have been like, what is that, like a movie with body switchers or something? Yeah. We would have been able to walk in each other's shoes for like a week yes. and then we'd have been like, okay, I tap out. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I get it. I get it. It's like, but you know, but it like, but it, I'm, I'm going to tell you, as I started writing, it made me, I don't know, part of like my characterization in my stories is mm-hmm. like, it shows in that. Yes, I have mine one too. book, you know, that I have one book that I wrote, which was about a couple divorcing. And there is a scene that I have at the top of that book. And that, that book is called Rumor. There's a scene at the top of that book where the um, the wife is standing in the mirror and she's had like two babies at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. And she's looking at herself in the mirror and she's just like, what, 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 what happened? You know, like, where's my body? Where did it go? Right. But then if you fast forward through that story a little bit, I have this, you know, potential partner looking at her and he's looking at her and everything she hated about herself. He loves you yes. know he's yes. like yes you know like mm, mm-hmm. okay i'm liking this that and the other and that's the thing you know you look at you and you look at me you look at those childhood stories we were talking about it's like mm-hmm. we would look at each other and want what the other person had yes you yes. know and, mm-hmm. and that's the thing and that's why i think like all of these different stories that we all write you know the voices that we are telling these stories through, I think is that necessity of, that is the necessity. That's what we need because there is someone out there who is living that same experience that you live. And there's someone out there who's living that experience that I live. And they Mm -hmm. need to know that it shouldn't just be a hope for X, Y, they deserve to have, you know, true companionship and partnership and intimacy. And they deserve to get it on, you know, what is that level? What are those terms that they want it on? And that's kind of, uh, I guess, going into the other part, that's kind of why I let people in on my uh, travel vlog when I started dating. Um, because I wanted, um, fluffy black women who are of a certain age, who, um, (laughs) never been married or divorced and it's been a long time or something like that. Like I wanted them to see that it's, there is potential if you look for it, um, if you try new things, um, to find someone who appreciates you for exactly who you are. Of course. I mean, one of the things that I told people is that um, when I write, my my male characters, they can cross, of course, you know, nationalities or, or whatnot, but also mm-hmm. culturally, you know, various religions. But one of the mm-hmm. reasons I wanted to do that was because I met, I know, I have friends, you know, black women who are like, I'm not down for that. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, you holler back at me in five years, boo. (laughs) (laughs) You let me know. Because if you're going to limit your possibilities for love and happiness, you tell me how that works out for you. Because that's what you're doing. You've essentially put a limitation on yourself. Yeah. And you've yeah. said that if the love that I'm looking for doesn't come in this package, then that's not the love I want. You know, and, and you know, not yeah. you, you didn't jump because I definitely want to talk about your wanderlust and in yeah. Scotland and everything and how that feeds into your stories. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. A lot of people are even afraid to travel. They don't want to travel yeah. by themselves. You know, they don't yeah. want to, you know, and these are the things that you know, I think you expose people to, like I was just sharing with you, you know, another author that, you know, I interviewed and she was like, yeah, I love Twyla. And, you know, and I'm like following her travel blog and da, 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 da. you know, tell her I said, Hey, and it's, you know, those things are, are 
you're when you open people up to that part of yourself, you're showing people who may not do that kind of a thing. They may not travel by themselves. They may not have ever considered, you know, Scotland. Maybe they're like, oh, I'll go to the uh, Caribbean. Maybe I go to Barbados. Yes. Yes. You know? So, so no. So yeah. So definitely talk to us about that experience. Talk to us about translating that into your books. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I feel like I'm, I'm a cold weather traveler, it seems. <laughs> like, well, I don't, I don't know. For some reason, like um, heading in uh, the warmer d- climates, the warmer direction, and like, I, I don't know. It, it scares me as a woman, solo woman, to travel to warmer climates places by myself like than it is to travel colder climate places by myself like I don't know um that's a weird thing a weird tick that I have about traveling but it is um, about hats do you do you want to make sure you can wear a hat because you always had some coats with a hat on (laughs) (laughs) it's possible it's possible it's just so you can wear hats when you travel (laughs) well first of all it's also because being a being a big girl um you get to sweating and I am not trying, like I'm trying to be cute. And so <laughs> when I'm walking all over everywhere, I'm not trying to be all sweaty and gross looking. So. <laughs> but, but, oh man. But I <laughs> getting back to the traveling part. <laughs> um, well, it all, well, not it all started with, but like, I've always wanted to travel. I, I taught English in Japan for a year. Um, and my travel isn't just, you know, like, let me go for a week and visit a place. Like, uh, Japan opened up a whole thing for me where I actually want to live wherever I'm interested in. So I lived in Japan for a year. When I got back home um, to Illinois, I'm just like, after all that I've seen, I can't be, I just can't stay here. I have to go. And so I moved to um, Long Beach, California, lived there for four years. Then I moved to Phoenix, Arizona when my parents retired out here. And I've been here off and on um, since then. Then I did a solo, um, a 21 day solo trip, my very first solo trip to Europe. And I, um, and I was in London, then Edinburgh, Scotland then um, Rome, then Florence, then Paris, and back to London again. And um, and when I was in Edinburgh, I just fell in love with that Gothic city. And so um, I wanted to come back for an extended stay and decided to stay there for six months. But um, uh, the my love affair with Scotland began with the books and TV show Outlander. And um, after that, I wrote a book called The Red Scot, where um, a Scottish man lives in the U.S. and is an MMA fighter. Um, And I figured, I'm just like, I love Outlander. I wrote a Scotsman. I need to actually go to Scotland. And so I went and stayed for six months and had the time of my life. I know. I kept waiting for you to post some of the guys. I was like, wait, wait, wait. He's like, she posting food pictures? What is it? I only, I only posted like one. Face, so you would do something to like skew something. I'm like, what, what, what? Yeah. yeah. I, only, I only posted one because he I gave know. me permission. Yeah. Me permission. But the, the others, not so much because I knew that, I don't know. Like, well, some of them I didn't even tell them that I was doing a vlog. But others knew, but I still like, you know, gave them their privacy. But um, I can respect that. But I was waiting. I was trying to look like, is there like a where like where's the mirror at with a reflection? I was waiting. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I mean, and I, I, it was, it was a good time. Like, imagine this. Um, the last person I dated was like we broke up September of two thousand nine. So now I'm going on, um, what is that? <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, I'm going on, uh, how many years now I'm single? Like 10, 11 years, something like that. Um, like I, I had only a handful of times that I tried online dating. 
um, here in the States. And those times were awful. Um, either just completely ignored altogether or um, the handful that would be interested were just so far from what I wanted. And like one, I remember one literally looked like he kept free bodies in the freezer. And I'm like, no, no, I can't do it. So, <laughs> so imagine my surprise when I get to Scotland and I didn't even realize it. It was, it, it was like the, it's so crazy. It was like one of the most magical, um, like meant to be moments where I just so happened to run into another African-American woman while I was in um, Scotland. And uh, it was complete destiny. And she was just like, you should date here and you should get on the online dating. And mind you, I had tried match.com before there were smartphones and apps. So I hadn't tried any of the dating apps, any of them. I hadn't tried Tinder, Bumble, nothing. And I'm just like, nah, uh uh-uh, nope, nope, I can't do it. And she's like, seriously, they like big women here. And they also, you know, they like black women. And I'm just like, she said, I just had a date in Glasgow. You you gotta try it. And so that night I uploaded Bumble first. And then after I, you know, like got a little comfortable with Bumble, I did Tinder. And oh, good Lord. Once I did Tinder, it was like it was opening Pandora's box. And so I I was talking about Tinder. You were like, you got tired. I'm like, yes. Yes. I I I understand that. I actually, yes, I got tired. I went from zero dates in however many years. At that point, it was nine years. Zero dates in nine years to I went, uh, I went on 25 dates with 15 men. And most, most of those dates were within two months. I was exhausted. <laughs> It's, it's hard work, hard work being in demand, Twyla. Hard work. But I mean, that was the first time I was in demand in years. And honestly, the first time since, because once I got back, I, I got back to the States. I had a little confidence. And I'm just like, all right, let me get on the dating apps here. And yep, zero dates. <laughs> <laughs> zero dates. I'm like, all right, it's time to get back out there. It's time. And I was so ready. I'm just like, all right, I'm about to travel again. And then COVID-19 hits and I'm just like, all right, well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what, I'm here with you for your whole online date. Like I've tried, I've tried every online dating app there is. Mm-hmm. And I've decided that there's just a wall, you know, <laughs> and it's probably one of the reasons why I write <laughs> what I write because yes. I like to believe that women of color, you know, women of color Mm -hmm. are beautiful and we are deserving of love. But like you, you know, when I traveled, I was on a dating app, you know, and I Mm -hmm. met men, I mean, from Paris to whatever. I was like, oh, hold up. Yes, (laughs) yes. Like, let's do this. But it's like, you know, but that's the thing. And I, you know, and which is one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you about multicultural dating, because yeah. that is quite different than, you know, you know, so if we write interracial romance, that's one thing. If we write yes. romance between, you know, Afri- two African-American characters, that's one thing. If we write, you know, that's one thing. But when you are talking about, there's still that Americanism in there. Yes. And yes. so when you are talking about multicultural, cultural dating that yes. is something that's really different and for a lot of my sisters out there I need mm-hmm. you to hear me because <laughs> just because you are over 40 and just because you are not a size six you mm-hmm. know does not mean that there is not a man out there who is not on the pages of one of my books or one of Twyla Turner's books you know, there's a yep. real man out there yes, <laughs> who is yes. looking for you, you yes. know? And, you know, if you open yourself up to possibilities, you don't know mm-hmm. what package he may be in, you yes. know? And, and traveling 
opened my eyes up to that, Twyla. Mm. Honestly, yes. you know, I'd be in yes. Paris, you know, some you know, some guy walking to me with a little smile, I'm like, hmm, I see you. <laughs> I see you. I went oh. to Ireland. I went to Ireland. I was like, okay, one, I went there. I was like, there are no gingers in Ireland. What is that? Is that like a <laughs> Yeah, there's not that many gingers in Scotland either. It's like, what? I'm like, I'm like, there are no gingers. But it was just like, a whole country is just, a, a what is it, predicating a, a myth. They're just lying to you. But, but the people with that crazy, what is it? Is it a Baroque? It's like, however you... Yeah, the Baroque. Yes. Just, yes. Yes. Exactly. It is just, yes. Thank you. I don't know what you're saying. It's like, slow down. Give me time to focus. Let me focus on your while you're talking because I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know? But it was like, I found so many people, and we don't even have to talk about Italy. You step off the plane in Italy. It's like, hey, well, I'm like, yes. No, not for yes. me. It, not for me with Italy. I've heard so many black what? women. I, I've heard so many black women have an amazing experience Girl. with men loving on them in Italy. Not me. I only, I only had the creepiest of <laughs> creepiest and the oldest of old <laughs> men like staring at me i had an old man proposition me for 50 euros i'm like really he literally pulled out his he pulled out his money and held up a 50 dollar euro and i'm like no like get away from me. But do not let that deter you no one listening to this don't let that deter you go anyway because rome was one of the most beautiful cities i've ever seen but I'm telling you, yeah i i did not have luck in regards to men there at all. I'll tell you, Rome is a beautiful city, but oh my gosh. I was like, every place, I was like, yes, okay. <laughs> Do I need to learn Italian? What is happening oh, in this country? Well, you know, like how long well, can see, I stay? See, I think for, in my opinion, I don't know if I'm right or not. I'd have to ask, but it seems like the, one, the women who have had better luck in Italy have been more on the slender side or like the the acceptable curvy, you know, a small waist but nice hips and butt and breast or whatever. But when you're like round like a little butterball like myself, they just weren't feeling me other than the old men. <laughs> not say round. I'm not worried about you, Twyla Turner, because you know why? Because it's like when when I was reading lyrics you know, and rock the curves. I know yes. exactly how you see yourself. So you may say about a ball, but I know that if you can write lyrics through Gage's eyes, yes. I know what you see when you look in the mirror and see yourself. Okay. Cause I'm telling you, it's like, maybe, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> 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 like, so she got on this body hugging suit and took out the whatever. I was like, I hear you, I hear you. But we're gonna have to go back to Italy and do that one together, my sister. Because yes, let, me tell yes. you what, let me tell you what, it is. It is literally one of the best experiences I've had. And like I said, I, I you know now, you know, I feel very fortunate that I have been able to travel to many different places. And you know, and and I've been open with some people, like some of my hesitation with traveling to different places was based on whether or not I believe that women of color, that black women would be received well. Yes. You yes. know, because I don't want to go any place to where I feel uncomfortable or whatnot. Exactly. And, you know, and like you, you were ready to go until, you know, the world turned on its axis. You know, yeah. I was in Brazil when the world shifted. I was like, wait, you know, I was, <laughs> I was on my way to Portugal. I was supposed to be, you know, in Greece uh. You know, I'm supposed to be doing, you know, I'm like, wait, yeah. wait, no. girl, wait. You know, That's I had so to like so try to shed a tear real fast, but I would have, I know I would have. <laughs> girl, I was in my I was in my my lodging in Brazil. I was in Florianopolis, Brazil, and um I was sitting there and I was just like, ooh. Wow, man. Okay. This is what the universe yeah. has in store. That's good. That's yeah. good. You know, I'll be back. It's okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. 
you know, because that's the thing, because I know that, you know, the journey will continue, maybe in a different yeah. way, but it will continue, you know? Yeah. And I yes. know for you, you're going to do the same thing because, you know, that's, there's this thing. And when it happens, you have to keep doing it. And it does, it translates into the work because yeah. there are, I look back at some of my stories and I forget how I even dropped a hint of something into it. You know, I'll talk about, mm -hmm. you know, Versailles over here and I'll talk about Belfast over there. And I'm like, wait, you know, but it's like, I don't even, sometimes, of course, when I'm writing the story, it's an intentional thing, but then mm -hmm. I forget that I had even done it, you know? Yeah. And then I go back and I read something. I'm like, oh yeah, you know? <laughs> and I love that. I love adding that cultural layer where it's possible if there's a story I'm working on. And so I know, like you said, you had written these books and then you finally went over to Edinburgh. And for yeah. the longest time, I kept saying you were in Edinburgh and you were in Ed Ed Edinburgh. So I <laughs> get my places right. But, you know, but overall. I, it's, 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 it's interesting. I, like, I often write the stories before I ever go to the place. Like I often write where I want to go. Um, and so as I'm like, I will Google, I will Google to death out of a place um, for my book, His Muse. Um, it's set in Nice. And so I like Googled Nice and the south of France to death and you know and I'll look at videos and I'll look at Google Maps and I'll look at photographs and all this and then I will write based on all of that and then I'll like okay I should go visit this place <laughs> that's kind of the way I do it it's so weird it's like I, I said from the beginning from the first book that I wrote and published I said if you write it, he will come. Like, you know, Field of Dreams, if you build it, he, they will come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Same thing in my right. If yes. you write it, he will come. Or if you write it, you know, you'll experience it. So that's what I've been doing. I, I actually haven't made my way to Nice, but it is on my list. Um, but I did, you know, obviously make it to France after the fact. Um, I'm just like, I gotta go. I gotta I gotta check it out. <laughs> well, no, like you, because I had never been to, you know, South America. So, you know, for me to get to Brazil and then, of course, rock the curves, I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and that was another one. I researched it. I watched YouTube videos of people, you know, in the streets of Brazil. And so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and I do the same thing because one of the other loves that you and I both share is House Hunters International. Oh, you know? yes. And yes. I'm just like that. You know, when I have like an idea about something that I want to do, I will do the same thing. You know, I, I you know, mm -hmm. shows like that one, they just like, I'm like watching it and I'm like gobbling it up. I could just sit there yes. and just let that sucker run all day. Like, what's, yes. the, next, what's the next one? <laughs> but, you know, but yeah, because I want to see because... When you watch a show like that, if you write about being in another country and you and you haven't been there, then yeah. you might use a standard American refrigerator, which yes. you know just isn't the case, you yes. know, in a sure. lot of countries. Sure. You might use a standard American oven. A lot of places they don't have yeah. ovens, you know. Yeah. So yeah. It seems like so you know doing that so by researching by just being there of course is one thing but mm -hmm. researching it writing your stories and then letting that you know kind of like fuel your passion until you get up and get on a plane and yes. you know step off in Scotland that's, and experience you know, it yeah and it's, exactly it's amazing and I love you know one of the people that um that I've interviewed before as well is Latrivia Welch. And, you yes. know, people always talk about, you know, her books and they always talk about the way she describes Russia, you know, and things mm -hmm. like this, you know, and I think that that's one thing when you're talking about, you know, the um, cultures, you know, mm -hmm. and a multicultural romance, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, that you get the opportunity to be able to do. You really do get the opportunity to introduce people to a world that they literally may never have seen outside yeah. of a movie, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so I, I love that 
not only are you writing in the space of IR, you know, and, you know, and big, beautiful women, but you throw this cultural layer on there that really, yeah. truly exposes people, you know, to, mm-hmm. to a whole new world. Yeah, it's, it's just, I, I, I basically, I have to write what I love or what I know. And I know the experience of being a big, beautiful woman. And I know, and, and I love to travel. I love being in different places, experiencing different cultures. So I got to put it in there. And I love that you do because I'm like, I'm all over this Brazil thing that's happening right now. And, it, you know, it's so funny because I um, met a few musicians because, you know, like I said, I was on this kind of cultural thing to, you know, become more aware of other mm-hmm. cultures and what they do. And so there is someone that literally, I was in a hamburger joint. <laughs> a hamburger joint in Brazil and they had a Brazilian blues singer (laughs) and it was like and they had a guitar and a keyboard it was a two-person group you know and he had this so like the whole time I'm reading Rock the Curves I'm hearing I'm hearing this singer that I met, you know, and he now follows me on Instagram and I follow him. I'll have to tag you so you can, um, you can virtually meet him. But the whole time I am, you know, reading Rock the Curves and I'm listening to, you know, the, um, the song that you have in there, I'm like, I'm hearing it in my head. I'm yeah. hearing it with, you know, with his voice. I'm hearing it with his tone. He had this crazy tone to his yeah. voice that was this bluesy, you know, like mm-hmm. it, was, it was just, it was, he had a cool tone to his voice. So, yeah. but yeah. Um, the whole time I'm reading your book, I'm thinking about this singer that I've met in Brazil, <laughs> you know? So you were like, you were reminding me of, a, of an experience. So yeah. I just, oh, you know, so kudos, you know, to this new That's book. Awesome. We've been chatting about this book, Rock the Curve. So, you know, so how about we actually yes. tell people about this yes. book? Yes. Um, so, yes. you know, so, um, so tell us a little bit about how Rock the Curves came to you you know, like, you know, why you wanted to, to write this one and, um, and tell us a little bit about it. Okay. Um, well, it, (laughs) I can't remember. Someone said something on Facebook, which I swear so many of my ideas come from just being on social media and chatting with people or whatnot. And someone said something on Facebook about rock star romance and I thought I haven't done a rock star romance and um I immediately like I'm like what would I do what would I do with a rock star romance and I go oh oh my god what if he's just like this super popular rock star and she's an aspiring singer and you know and everything again you know my my books center around a curvy woman and so I was thinking how how could that be incorporated? And I'm just like, Oh, you know how, um, the majority, you know, pre Lizzo, um, the majority of the women that they want as artists, um, to put artists out there and give record deals to, they want them to be slender and, and have a certain look. And so I thought, how perfect would it be to have this gorgeous guy rock star that has it all and here's this woman who's an aspiring singer and can't have it all because um, no one wants to give her a shot because she's, um, you know, too curvy. And so, um, and then she has to uh, become a backup singer, like lower herself, lower her talent to become a backup singer for this guy. And so I'm just like, oh, that would be so great. And she could resent him and, oh, this could, this could make for a great novel. So I kind of, wrote it down, wrote some notes, set it aside, and, you know, didn't really think about it after that. And then um, the author Olivia Gaines posted um, a pre-made cover in um, one of the author groups saying, someone, I can't get it because I already have so many 
uh, books that I still need to get done, but someone needs to snatch this cover because it's gorgeous. I saw that cover and died because immediately I said, that would fit that rock star uh, story that I just thought of. I have to buy it. So I bought it and then I basically wrote towards the cover, which I've never done before. I've never had a cover already done before the book was done. So I basically wrote towards the cover and um, that's pretty much how it came about. That's interesting because, you know, I have, I don't know, because, you know, I have a a Pinterest page and when Mm -hmm. I start thinking about story ideas, you know, like I said, you know, research, I start pinning things to like a a whip in progress page. Mm -hmm. And so, so I've never written to a cover, but I have written, I guess, you know, to like those images because I find those characters. But Mm -hmm. so that's a cool way. So you wrote in kind of reverse. Yes. You know, so I mean, you know, like I said, there's all kinds of ways to come into a story, right? Yes. It's like in a, then, a pre-made cover. That's not bad. Yeah. And, and I actually, um, because, but I mean, a few, just only a few readers have said after they read it, they're just like, this is actually very sweet. It's more sweet than like, they're just like, of course it has, it's, you know, the signature Twyla explicit sex scenes. <laughs> but they're just like, but it's sweet. Like it kind of has that, contemporary feel or whatever and I go and I was like because of that dang cover (laughs) I'm like sweet but explicit sex scenes okay okay (laughs) well it's just well especially because there's there's a lot of build-up like for me I don't do I do some build-up but not as much as I did in this story (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like and it was like this build up and it was sweet and it was I don't know it, it was there, it is it is you know it it's like it's um I don't know because you know because I, I tend to like yeah I guess it depends on my mood but yeah. I do like when you can see that tension yes kind yes. of building up you know yes. I yeah, had to force yeah. myself. I had to force myself because I've been known to, you know, like jump the gun because I'm like, just give them the goods. (laughs) (laughs) Just do it. Give it to them. And this time I'm just like, no, Twyla, take your time on this one. Don't rush it. (laughs) Don't rush it, Twyla. But, you know, but it is funny, though, because, you know, the... um, because like I said, depending on my mood and depending on the authors, because I know if I read this author, this is what kind of the pace is going to be. If I read that author, this might be the pace. But, you know, when you, it's kind of like, you know, when you really like, when you really know those characters, then mm-hmm. when it happens, you're like, yes, get your, you know, because yes. then you're like, you're like all rooting for them, you know? Yes. And yes, because exactly. of the way you've written this so far, I'm like, oh, I see I'm going to have problems with that, you know? And then, you know, because in, in my head, because I am a writer too, I'm in my head, I'm like, now if Twyla does this, there's going to be some problems because of this, you know? <laughs> I'm already, I'm already preparing myself for you to do some things that I think I'm not going to like, Twyla. You know? And it's like, cause I'm like, and it's like, I'm like my girl Lyris. We don't have, we don't have time to play these games with Twyla. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, and it's just like, it's so funny, cause some people are just like, well, you know, I was starting to get annoyed with it. <laughs> it's like, look here. I'm like, I gotta have conflicts. <laughs> Look, we know that you gotta have conflict. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's I'm, like, gonna, I'm just girl, saying, I'm gonna have to hurt you. It's like, my girl, don't do her dirty. <laughs> I'm already on her team. I'm like, Larry, I'm gonna do you dirty in a minute, girl. You know, but I'm like, I'm on her team. And the thing is, it's like, because of one of the stories that you shared at the at the beginning in the prologue, I'm mm-hmm. I'm on Gage's team. I'm like, oh 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 like, for sure. I'm like, Gage, don't fall, don't don't let this happen. Don't like, <laughs> don't, don't fall back into you're not that Gage anymore. I'm like, you know, I'm already talking to the characters, so I'm preparing myself, Twyla, because I know I know you got to have conflict. I know this, but I'm no, it's not myself. it's not gonna. 
it's not going to be what you think. I swear it's not. It's okay. it's going to be it's going to be better. Okay. I mean, there's, of course, there's going to be conflict, but trust me, trust me, it's not what you think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take you at your word. But now, if it happens, I'll be like Twyla. You promised me. I'm just gonna put it. I'm just gonna put it on Facebook. And I'll be like Twyla Turner. You promised. <laughs> and, then I'm, and then I'm gonna say, keep reading, because in the next <laughs> chapter, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're gonna see. Yeah. You guys hear. You guys hear it, right? So when you see that post, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like it's all gonna be on on Twyla Turner. So I had to take a moment <clears throat> and look up, you know, look up my my Brazilian blues rock artist. His name yes. is Rafael Salib. So I am going to have to share some of his posts with you because yes. he has a crazy tone, crazy bluesy tone to his voice, and mm-hmm. I just really. I want you to hear it because now that you've got me all in Gage's world, I'm like, I'm making him sound like Raphael in my head. (laughs) (laughs) So I just want you to know. I just want you to know. All right. So, you know, we, um, so before we get ready to close, Twyla, we've talked a little bit about Rock the Curves, which was just Mm -hmm. released Friday. When was that released? Friday, right? Yeah, Friday. Friday the 10th. Yep. Friday the 10th. And so what else, what else can we expect from you? Do you have anything else coming out soon? And for people who, you know, may not be, you know, as familiar with Twyla Turner, and I don't know who that is, but, you know, how can they reach you? How can they find you on social media? Okay. Um, well, I, I always have something coming, but, um, as of right now, nothing is written. I just have a lot of work. I have a lot of works in, in, in progress. Um, I have to finish, I have to finish, um, my last two Curvy Girls Club books. I have to finish the other two, um, Viking Brothers series, uh, and then why did I just come up with two more books? One I came up with yesterday. And, so, <laughs> and I'm like, really? No <gasps> shortage of the muse, huh? Your muse is speaking yes. loudly. Yes, very loudly. And I'm just like, I just, I don't have enough fingers or brain power for all this. But, um, and if I don't finish the Curvy Girls Club or the Viking Brothers, um, the readers are going to kill me. But yet... I'm getting excited about some other stuff that's not even connected. So anyway, I do have some other things coming. Um, I just don't know when yet. And, uh, and then as far as uh, uh, keeping in touch with me, finding me, um, I am on Facebook, of course. All you have to do is um, search Twyla Turner, T W Y L A. And um, there are two of us, but um, if you, you'll obviously, if anyone stumbles across me, um, my books are, you know, public, uh, the covers of my books are in my public um, photograph profile. So um, if you see Rock the Curves, Winter's Beast, The Red Scott, and The Bravest Hero, like you see those books, you'll know that that's my profile um and then also on on instagram i'm under novels with curves all one word um and on twitter also twyla turner 11 so yeah that's basically i'm everywhere even though i'm not on twitter that often and i'm just now starting to utilize instagram more um and then one of these days i'm probably going to be brave enough to get tiktok <laughs> i don't oh, know I, I knew you were going to say that i was like i don't TikTok. know i haven't i i haven't been brave enough to do it yet because i i already am procrastinate with facebook <laughs> So I'm just like, ah, oh, do I really want to do TikTok? Because everyone who is on TikTok says that they just don't get anything done. They're like, I don't get anything done because I'm always on TikTok. So I'm like, maybe yeah. I see so many people. I'm not even on TikTok at all <laughs> as of yet. And it's like, and still the feed falls into yes. 
my yes. Instagram or into my yes. Facebook. And I'm like, do these people do anything else? <laughs> you know, or can yeah, they ske- can they schedule a TikTok post? Because I'm like, is this all they're doing all day is TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think so. I mean, it's bad. It's bad enough. I am on Facebook constantly. So if you want to find me, Facebook is really and truly the place because I am on there constantly. I just, I don't know. It's like, I feel as if um, the authors are my coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook. Like, we are, I, we are. You know, since I don't, since I don't have, you know, like writing is my sole income. It's, it's the only thing I do. Like I gotta have, I gotta have some kind of social interaction with coworkers. And so Facebook is like, when you're talking to your, uh, your cubicle neighbor, that's, that's what Facebook is for me. <laughs> Just yelling across the cubicle. I got yeah. that. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Cracking jokes and being stupid all day. That's yes. true. It's like water cooler conversations. Like, did you yes. see that? So find me there. That's where you'll find me. That's and she is true. She is. She's being honest. You guys will find her on <laughs> Facebook. All right. All right, Twyla Turner. Thank you so much for joining me here to have this conversation, not only about big, beautiful women but also about multicultural romance and wanderlust, the desire to travel the world and see as much as we can possibly see. It has been my pleasure to host you today and to have this conversation, you know, and, um, and I've wanted to do it for so long because, you know, I, I said you have so much love out there and it's just, I really wanted to just have a moment to be able to talk with you. I was sharing with somebody even before I got ready to kind of, cut ties and go over to Brazil. Like Mm -hmm. one of the people that I reached out to when I was trying to do my YouTube channel and stuff was like, was you, I was like, Hey, what equipment are you using? What software are you using? (laughs) How are you making these videos when you were over in Scotland? And you were like, yeah, I have a gimbal and I do this and I do that. And I'm like, (laughs) you know, so when you talk about your writers or your coworkers, yes, yes, we are. Because (laughs) when you have a new idea and no matter how crazy it is, there's, uh, there's another author friend out there somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) If they are not doing it, they might be thinking about it, you know? And so, Somebody has started to pave the way. And so, you know, even thank you for that. Thank you for, you know, taking a moment to share what you were doing with me because I'm using, you know, some of that software. I'm, you know, I'm using Adobe and I'm doing other things, but, you know, but yeah. So, you know, even that, thank you for sharing, you know, for taking a moment and sharing that with me, you know, and again, definitely thank you for being here with me. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me. I've had a lot of fun. Ah, cool. And, you know, and for all of you people who are listening, you know, Twyla Turner on social media everywhere. Find her on (laughs) Facebook and her new release, Rock the Curves. Find her on Instagram and, you know, find me, your girl, Angela K. Austin. And I'm going to definitely tag Twyla in some of the um, some of the music videos for my new friend, Raphael Salib, because when you guys are reading Rock the Curves, I want to know if you hear his voice like I do. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation and I will speak to you all again soon.